My name is Andrea Jones Roy, and I am here to talk about using data science to create a better future of work. So first and foremost, a very warm greetings to all you Earthlings watching today. Now, why am I calling you Earthlings? Aren't I an Earthling? I'll explain. So, my name is Andrea. I am a professor of data science at New York University, where I teach our intro course, Data Science for Everyone, where I do really believe everyone can get involved in data science, and we'll talk about that today as well. And I also teach an advanced course on natural language processing. When I'm not doing that, I'm a research consultant for Fortune 500 companies, as well as tech startups and scale-ups. And I'll be drawing from my work in the people analytics space, and in particular, around employee engagement, performance, talent management, and measurement. But when I'm not doing either of those things, I'm a time traveler. That's right, you heard this right. I would never lie to you about such a thing. I am a time traveler. It's very dangerous for me to be here right now. You know what happens when the space-time continuum is disrupted, but I have come back from the year 2322 to give you several very important messages. So listen carefully. Now. I know that back in 2022, there's a lot going on in the world and we're really nervous about what the future is gonna look like. So I am here to share some good news. Number one, yes, Law and Order SVU is still on the air. We're all very excited for season 224. Number two, yes, yes, I know. Dr. Cow Vegan Nut Cheese, which tragically shuttered its Brooklyn doors in 2022, has reopened and is shipping across the galaxy. <gasps> Data science, once just left for programmers and people who prefer to sit alone in front of laptops, is now something everyone is a part of. Wow. Those are my big updates. Now, okay, okay, I know there are a few others that maybe you're like, actually, there's some other big events that I'm thinking about. What's going on with those? I got you. Low-rise jeans, do not worry. It looks like they're coming back in 2022, but they are not. All right, we're cheering at home. Take those jeans, raise them up, the future looks good. Oh, 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 I should have also told you, by the way, the world does still exist. So well done, all of you. But let's go back to this data science piece because that's gonna make the difference. Everyone gets involved in data science and this leads to all kinds of wonderful things. One, data science is fun, so everyone has a really you know, fun time and a better life, not bad. But we also see some really important changes in the workplace. For example, we lead and collaborate remotely across the solar system seamlessly. We also are now able to show up at work truly as ourselves. For example, I show up as an astronaut who is working through a wormhole in order to play with my parents' dog from 2022. That's actually why I'm in the past, but I thought I'd stop by here as well. All right. We also have the most level playing field you could ever imagine. Now, I know this looks a little bit like a flat earther thing. Don't get too hung up on it. It's illustrative we have a flat, uh, level playing field and that's awesome. So wow, that all sounds really good, but how do we get to this vegan cheese laden wormhole utopia and how can data science get us there? It's a long journey. I cannot give you all the answers. You're gonna have to explore a bit on your own. So I just wanna say to prepare yourselves, there is gonna be a little bit of programming in your futures. You will have to be a troubled mathematician at times, but, the most important change that has to start right away is that smart, thoughtful, creative, imaginative people with a variety of expertise or a whole career behind them and really interesting ideas about how to improve the workforce all get involved in data science. This is the way. And it should take a long time, but because I'm here, I'm gonna help you get there really fast. So, welcome to the Warp Zone. Are you ready to hear how to get to this data science future? I hope you're saying yes, because we're going in. If you're not, I guess just turn this off. That's okay, too. Here is the secret code to getting to this utopian future of work. Actionable, data-driven, insights, and never saying that phrase again. That's right. If you wrote this down as I was saying it, actionable, data-driven, insights, take that piece of paper and rip it up. If you wrote it on your computer, take your computer and throw it in the river, all right? We are not gonna say actionable, data-driven insights anymore. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna say instead to get us to this future of work. 
The first thing we need to say is we drive data. And data only exists because we decided it was worth collecting and we decided how to collect it. It's not as catchy, but it's important. To understand this, let's take a moment to talk about what data is. So we think of data as this futuristic swirl of numbers that somehow holds magical properties that are gonna help us better understand everything. This is a great fantasy, but it is just that, a fantasy. What data actually is, is something much more simple. So we need to stop saying things like data speaks for itself and data is somehow representative of capital T truth. That's not to say data isn't incredibly valuable. It's just to say that we need to reframe how we think about data so we can do more of it and get to that future. Specifically, data is just numbers. Sometimes it's words, sometimes it's symbols, but generally it's just a way of describing the world. That's all. It's awesome, but it's not some kind of magical sorcery that's going to solve all our problems. We need to solve all our problems. So first, I said data does not equal truth. So what is data? Well, data is a momentary approximation of the world at a particular time and a particular place. It's also a subjective approximation because we as humans decide what's worth measuring and how to go about measuring it. There's a whole wide world out there. What are we gonna zoom in on and what are we gonna write down about that thing we chose to zoom in on? And then we say things about that data. So it's a snapshot of the past that we hope will help us understand the future. Nothing more, nothing less. This is not to say that the truth is not out there. There is a reality out there. We're not living in a simulation. Even if we were, it wouldn't change the message, all right? And I'm not at liberty to say anything further about that. So the truth is out there. We just turn the truth into data using instruments that we've designed. So to go from truth to this data that helps us better understand the world, we must use measurement. And that is one of the biggest ways that folks who are not already trained in programming or statistics can get involved right now in measurement and help us get to that future of work. Why am I stressing this? Well, let me give you a dramatic reenactment of some of my consulting clients, anonymized, when I work with them using data. So one thing that my consulting clients are very interested in using data to do is to better understand engagement in their organization. To which I say, fantastic, what do you mean by organization? And the people that I'm talking with at that company will say lots of really thoughtful things. We feel valued, we feel challenged, we're you know, aligned with the culture, but also we're not aligned with the culture and we celebrate our differences and it's all so great and we all bring ourselves to work, da 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 da. And I say, fantastic, I love everything you're saying. I love that some of it overlaps with other companies. I love that much of it is unique to your own culture and opportunities. And I say, how are you gonna go and measure that? I cannot wait to hear. And they will say, oh, we're just gonna use whatever questions the engagement survey company gave us. To which I say, oh, all right. So I get why we're doing this, but we could use some initiative and do measurement ourselves. How do I measure things? Well. Conceptualization, what do you mean by the thing you care about? What is engagement at your company? You know this, regardless of your role at this company, whether you're a CEO, just joined, or working in the people team, or working on some other team, you have an idea of what engagement means and you can help measure it. Operationalization, how am I gonna turn that specific concept into a number? And then later on, and I never see companies do this, how am I gonna make sure that I actually measured what I thought? Now. There's a lot more to be said about this, but I can't stay in, the, in 2022 for too long without really messing up a lot of things, so I push on. The key here is if you're trying to measure engagement and you're not sure what you mean by engagement, ask yourself, why am I even doing engagement surveys in the first place? I know there's a reason that's deeper than, ah, we're doing it because we think we have to. All right, let's move on to insights. So insights, why are insights so dangerous? Well, we decide what counts as an insight. And we decide that based on what we think is interesting given the patterns we've bothered to inspect. And by the way, that's all using the data we thought was worth collecting and decided how to collect. So often when I go to companies, they say, hey, we did our engagement survey. And I say, awesome, you know, great. What do you think are some of the more interesting areas or important areas to start your research on the engagement survey data? And they'll say, the insights. And I'll say, right. 
Okay, yes, insights are great, but what's a question or a theory or idea you have, uh, maybe even just an instinct about what might be interesting to uncover in this data? And they'll say, oh, insights. And I'll say, no, right? There's much more to making discoveries than just looking at data and hoping insights will magically appear. I suggest the scientific method. Yes, I traveled 200 years back in time through the solar system to tell you about something we all learned in middle school. Yes, indeed. But it is so important and I cannot stop talking about it. The scientific method is how we go from data to new knowledge about the world. And it's often how we know what data to collect in the first place. A few things to know about the scientific method, it's iterative. The minute you get to the end of your particular study, that is the beginning of the next study. The number two thing to know about the scientific method is that data is actually only part of a very small piece of it. The rest of it is, you guessed it, about thinking. So think about your organization. What is something you, a smart, thoughtful person, notice is going on? What do you think might be happening? What's an alternative explanation for that thing that you're seeing? How could you evaluate that? Well, you could test it, right? And then repeat and so on. So we want to keep thinking about our data. What do we want to understand? Why do we want to understand it? What do we think is going on? And how do we know if we are correct? And again, if you're not sure where to go with this, go back to, the, to your roots. Why? Why are we doing engagement surveys? Every company will have a different answer, right? And remember that the survey and initial analysis really might just be the observation stage. Last piece, actionable. This one is so sneaky. I would love to have actionable insights, but unfortunately, there are only actions we decide to take. And we take those actions based on what we think is the most plausible causal story that explains what I think is interesting based on what I decided to look at using data that I'd bothered to collect and decided how to collect. We are driving this. So, so often companies will come to me and they'll say, we looked at the engagement survey, we found that sustainability is low. And I'll say, wow, that seems important to dive in on. What are some likely causal stories? And they'll come up with all kinds of thoughtful reasons for why people might be uh, struggling with sustainability. And it could vary across the organization. And it's really great to hear, and it's important. And I'll say things like, wow, it looks like we have a lot of really thoughtful research and institutional and cultural change ahead of us. And they'll say, nah, we'll just do a recharge week and hope for the best. And I <sighs> travel through time to tell you all not to do that anymore. Instead, causal stories. The temptation, if we have engagement survey results come in and we see that engagement gone up, the temptation is to cheer and high five and then say, that's the whole story, bye, right? And that could be the case. But what are other causal stories behind that pattern? Maybe the disengaged talent left, or maybe they're so disengaged they didn't even bother to take the survey or they don't think the survey is going to make a difference. Or maybe some parts of the org had increased engagement, but other parts maybe smaller parts, had some pretty important declines and that's worth looking into. Maybe, and I suspect this is the case in a lot of organizations, we're not actually measuring engagement as we understand it and we aim to improve it at our organization. And honestly, we probably never even bothered to really define it, so it's hard to say. And hang on, why are we doing this again? Every time we do research, whether it's about our customers, about our people, about potential talent, about performance, think very carefully about what it is you want to understand, why you want to understand it, what you mean by that thing, and then think about the scientific method and the causal stories that might underpin it. So in summary, I know that actionable, data-driven insight sounds really exciting and it's really snappy to say, but you know what else is snappy to say? Actions we take based on what we think is the most plausible causal story, which is one of many inferences we could draw from what we think is interesting in data we measure and collect. Yes, I know you love that already, but if you're in a hurry, you can shorten that even further to aw sick, all right? So just write aw sick. The next time you are working with data and you're not sure what to do with it, or if you see the data team working on something and you think, I don't have anything to say to them, yes, you do. We need to hear from you. So a few parting words before I must go back to my century. We all have expertise to lend to data science. Three ideas for how to get our, our folks who are not trained in programming and stats per se, or don't love those fields, involved in data science are measurement, research design, and causal inference. Of course, programming and stats, those things we think of when we think of data science are awesome, but don't let your lack of interest or fears around those be a barrier to involvement. We've got to get to that future of work and we need your ideas. Finally, 
as I float away from you now, I want to remind you data is not magic. It is but a partial imperfect snapshot of the past that we hope will tell us about the future. By the way, one more secret, Kim Kardashian did get a real job and I'll see you all at work. Thank you very much. Enjoy the present. <laughs>